Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Well, welcome back, everyone. It's Jane Atkinson with your Wealthy Speaker Podcast. And today we're talking about something that kind of seems basic, uh, but with someone who's business trajectory, let me say that again, business trajectory has been anything but basic or common. Our special guest today is Joe Calloway. Welcome back to the show, Joe. Hey, Jane. So good to be here. Oh, well, you know what? We're talking today about picking a lane and in some cases, changing your lane. And, you know, I want everybody to remember, I've said this before, that this term from my perspective started with you. I don't know who you got the term pick a lane from. Do you yeah, remember? I don't either. And I know you've been so great. Every time you write it or say it, you say, no, I got that from Joe Cowell. <laughs> well, I don't like I to not attribute I, it. To I know. Thank you. And that's what a good speaker does. I didn't invent the term for sure. I mean, changing lanes and Picking a lane is, is an old saying that's been a long time. I tell you what, though, it's not understanding the significance of, of and, and being intentional and strategic about the lanes that you pick, when you change, how you change. It can kill your business yeah. if, if you don't get it, you know, if you don't have a good, clear understanding of what you're doing. Yeah. And, and the world that I've been living in lately, I've been studying a, a podcast and a kind of a course from a woman named Brooke Castillo. I'm not sure if you've heard of her. She has, she teaches coaches how to be coaches. Yeah. And so she has people picking lanes that are like insanely narrow. And I say yeah. insanely just in an awestruck way, not in a, it's crazy way. Um, like, a doctor who coaches other physicians on how to lose weight. Like, and we were not going to let in the dentists and we're not going to let in the podiatrist just practicing physicians, like really, really, really narrow lanes. And it's working for people, Joe. It works for people. I, I tell you a couple of things that occurred to me many, many years ago, I was ran across a speaker whose topic, now this isn't as narrow as helping other doctors lose weight, but (laughs) his topic was, I teach sales managers how to hire great salespeople. Mm. I mean, that is so, it's like, yeah. it's such a big piece of the this. puzzle. Like that type of thing is a really important piece of the puzzle, right? If you don't know how to hire, like you think about the ripple effects of not doing that well. And so people, I think, will pay for a topic like that because it's so important to the bottom line. Yeah, two things. Number one, there's such clarity around it. The second he says it, you go, okay, I get it. I know what you do. Now, that may or may not be something that I need, but step one, I know what you do. Yeah. I get it. And so many speakers over the years, I've looked at their stuff and I've, I've said to them, you know, you've got a lot of interesting things here, but I don't really get it. Yeah. I don't quite, I can't, I can't really wrap my arms around exactly what it is that you do, except that you talk about something that on some level is interesting. Mm-hmm. But but that doesn't create value for anybody. Right. And if it requires a lot of explanation, then maybe that opening line that you're giving, your yes. promise is not quite working. Um, so what you said there just made me think about what do you think is the difference maker between a three-year, I say, I'm saying career, but I really mean business, and a 30-year career in the speaking industry. What do I think is the, is the main difference? Yeah. What do you think is the difference maker? Someone who after three years says I'm packing up my suitcase and going home. Yeah, I I think, and I am like a broken record on this. I think it's the quality of the product. I think it's product quality. Mm -hmm. The reason Mercedes sells a lot of cars is because they make a really good car. Uh, the, the point of Mercedes 
is not the advertising. The point of Mercedes is to make a great car. To me, and a lot of people disagree with this, so let me be, for some folks, a contrarian. As a speaker, your primary job, primary job, is not to get the speech. Mm -hmm. Your primary job is to have an incredible, incredibly valuable quality product. Then your secondary job is, of course, you've got to do marketing and advertising. Right. And there are people that are brilliant at that. But it all comes back to, and here's the difference, I think, between a three-year and a 30-year career, is the people with a 30-year career have got such core value and what they deliver to the marketplace that then the marketplace b becomes their, my, it, it's like this self-fulfilling job-creating machine. Right. Because if ever there was a business that depends on positive word of mouth, it's our business. And if you've got 300 past clients out there all talking about how incredibly valuable you were to their organization, that, that means a 30-year career. If, 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 if you stay relevant. Right. And so that's you might have why... A, and that's why you've continued to kind of shift and evolve and change and ebb and flow in terms of your lane. Uh, you've, you've picked a lane, you've reinvented, you've picked another lane. Yeah. And uh, I think that the reason is that you've just always wanted to be on that front edge of staying relevant. And I know that, hang on, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off that little ringer in case that decides to come back again. I sure. know that the reason you have done that is because a, you know, you have a reason for every what three years, maybe saying, Hey, I'm getting a little antsy. I'd like to move in a different direction. Talk a little bit about, and I do want to talk about what you're up to today. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about your own evolution. Yeah. And it was, you've hit the two facets of it. One was, I want to stay relevant in the marketplace. Listen, I've been a business speaker almost my whole career. And if you're going to be a business speaker, I, I, or I'll make it about me, if I'm going to be a successful business speaker, I can't give the same speech today that I gave a year ago because business has changed. Now, if I'm talking about human values, uh, you know, if, if, if then that's different. Those well, your are your own personal story of or my own personal story. Thing. Yeah, it's funny. People say that speakers have to tell their story. I don't have a story. <laughs> I'm a re I'm a reporter. I don't tell Joe Calloway's story. I report on what works in the marketplace. Well, if it if that's my business, then I, I have to constantly change it. But I've changed. And, and I'll get to the second facet, or here's where the second facet comes in. I have a real low threshold for boredom. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't hear myself say the same stuff or do it the same way very long without it driving me crazy. I just, I get sick of it. I get tired of it. And so I've gone from <clears throat> speeches to workshops to doing a lot of onstage interviews Mm -hmm. with CEOs or with a panel of the top salespeople. Which is so um, fun and creative, really. I mean, I'm surprised that's still not happening way more than it is. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's a successful format. But I've, I've always looked for different ways to deliver the information and the ideas that I come up with. But I've always said my job is not that I'm a speaker. My job is to understand or at least up until my last shift, <laughs> but my job has been for a long, long time. It was to understand what is working today in business and pass that on in such a way that my clients get tremendous value from it. The, the way I delivered it was a speech or a workshop or, or a conversation or whatever, but that was just the delivery system. It wasn't right. the core of my job. Right, right. And you've called yourself a reporter, which I think is really interesting. It, it makes me think about an identity crisis. I talk to a lot of my clients about not 
thinking of themselves as a quote unquote speaker, but thinking about themselves as an expert on a particular thing who distributes their knowledge in lots yeah. of different ways. This goes back to your buddy, Randy Pennington, who's been on the podcast before uh, talking about, sure. are you the Coke or are you the Coke machine? You know, delivery mechanism is yeah. just one aspect of it. And I think that sometimes people's identities can really get wrapped up in I am a speaker. What do you think about that? Well, I just, I never thought of myself as being a speaker. I thought of myself as being somebody who understands, you know, X subject. Uh, so much of my delivery, which got me tons of speeches, was the books. Right. Particularly the last few years, I'd get an email out of the blue and I'd say, how'd you hear about me? Well, somebody gave our CEO your book and it would be one of my, I, I ended up writing eight of them. Uh, and so the, the book delivery system, but that was intentional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. I wrote my books for the purpose of positioning me to get speaking jobs. Right. And, and, and what do we call that kind of a book? I'd love to have a good name for it. That's a book that leads you into a speaking engagement, but you used to write books that followed you out of a speaking engagement. What is, what do we call those? I'd like to have a good well, name. And th there's, you know, there's a real difference. Actually, my first book, Becoming a Category One, led me into more speeches than any other book that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, and they're both totally legitimate. Sometimes a speaker will call me and say, I want to write a book. How do I get a publisher? And I'd say, whoa, 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 back up. What do you want the book to accomplish for you? Well, I want to make a lot of money by selling it in the back of the room. And I'd say, well, then why on earth do you want a publisher? Make a the publisher, book. The publisher keeps all the money. <laughs> you just get a little tiny, tiny bit of it. Yeah. Do, do the book yourself. Then you get to keep all the money if you're going to sell it in the back of the room. And uh, our buddy Larry Wingett used to say, I sell souvenirs. Right. His books were, he'd, he was selling almost, he was selling the cover of his book as much as he was the, the, the writing, the, the book content. itself. But yeah. that changed over the years. You know, it's interesting. Larry and I used to line up our books and show speakers. And we would say, what's the most obvious difference between Larry's books and Joe's books? Every one of Larry's books had a huge, big, colorful picture of Larry on the cover. <laughs> not, not one of my books ever, ever had a picture of me on the cover. Mm -hmm. Because Larry was selling Larry. I was selling ideas. Right. And we were both real clear about that. And if people don't have uh, becoming a category of one, that cover of that book was oh, a real... Uh, it was a brilliant cover. I don't know who came up with the, however many green apples and one red apple of it yeah. in the middle. Um, but it also was a major game changer for you in terms of who your audiences were. Let's, let's, I know we've talked about this on the podcast before, but every time you hear something, you hear it a little bit differently. What, uh, what was the game changer there for you? Well, the, the game changer was, that was a huge shift from being a speaker. And this is a totally legitimate way to position yourself. Be, and I used to consciously do this and do it with my, my uh, marketing. I would say, Joe, uh, what was it? For a long time, I had a tagline that was, Joe turns ordinary meetings into great events. Mm. And it was very focused on the event itself. Right. And how... If you Very have me speak, yeah, the whole event's going to be better because of the energy and all that. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Becoming a category one really shifted me into being more of a serious business speaker. And it was, I mean, CEOs or vice presidents of sales or whatever would look at the cover, would look at those five green apples and the one red one, and they'd say, that's it. That's exactly what we want to be is yeah. the red apple. Yeah. And so just that cover conveyed so much uh, clarity about what my message was. Mm. Here's how to differentiate yourself from the competition. Boom. That was it. Yeah. And yeah. it really, it really cemented me as being much more of a business, business speaker, as opposed to a motivational speaker 
who knew some stuff about business. Right, right. And so many things to unpack in there, uh, Joe. My mind is reeling. Our buddy Brian Palmer said, because you used to be a quote-unquote speaker, he said, clients no longer want to hire speakers. They right. want to hire smart people who happen to speak. And yep. for, with, for you, I think when you went into becoming a category of one, you elevated yourself up out of speaker mode into expert mode and everything changed in terms of your paycheck size, your yep. audience size, your paychecks went up, your audience yep. went down, right? In yep. terms of the size. size of the audience went down. Yep. The hoorah went down because you yep. was getting more serious. You weren't getting all the glory maybe that you once did with the big motivational talks. I've gotten half dozen standing ovations in the last 15 years. Mm. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of speeches. Yeah. I, I didn't, I, I quit getting standing ovations, but I got a higher fee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So which it was better. It means more impact and less, I think, rah, rah, or whatever it was that you were delivering way back then. But I think it's just really interesting, you know, <laughs> kind of circling back to the idea of being a really great marketer or a really yeah. great presenter. I think the great marketer gets the first gig, but not the three that come from it. And that's probably the difference between the three-year career and the 30-year career. You have to have something that's going to keep people talking. And you have clients. Talk about, like, just in the last 30 days, who's called you up out of the blue that you knew from years and years ago or a, a referral from somewhere? Or oh, my gosh. <clears throat> about three weeks ago, I was in uh, Durham, North Carolina with a um, – a leadership team. There were about eight of them and we sat around a table, which is what I do now with my leadership coaching. I call it leadership coaching retreats. Okay. I don't stand up and speak. We sit around a table and we have, we talk about things. But That's this so guy, Jane, worked for AT&T in New Jersey. He heard me speak in 1994. And he called me about six months ago and said, since 1994, I've remembered what you told us, and I've followed your books, and I follow you online. He said, and now I'm in the, he said, in 1994, I said, boy, if I ever have a chance to hire a speaker, I'm getting him. He <laughs> said, well, it's 25 years later, and guess what? You're hired, and he yeah. brought me in. So that was really reaching back. Wow. Uh, on, on Friday, I've got a CEO and a COO from the West Coast flying into Nashville, and we're going to do coaching. And I've been working for them off and on now for, I guess, eight or nine years. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, but it all goes back to the quality of the product. Right, right. And so the ideas that they've got from you on stage. So now let's move into what you're doing now, yeah. this, this uh, shift that you've made. What was, uh, well, first tell us what it is, and then I want to hear why the shift and towards it, what it is. It's coaching. Yeah. And it's called Next Success. Yeah. And uh, see, see how much clarity, because I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> <But> it, <laughs> it's still, it's still work, brewing, right? Yeah, although I'm pretty happy with this, and it Good. seems to be working really well. People say, what do you do? And I say, I help successful people think through strategize and take action on their next success. Mm. And so I work with people that, that truly are really successful and what they've done has worked. But for any number of possible reasons, they know they need to move on to the next thing, which may be just the next iteration of exactly what they're doing now. But how do we take it to, you know, the, the next level? Or it may be that they want to get, they need to get rid of some things and focus in and say, I'm, all, I'm doing five things now. I need to just do two or one or whatever. Or it could be that they're just getting bored. Is, and, is it for the individual, Joe, or is it for like a team, a leadership team like you just both. did in North Carolina? Because that <laughs> seems to me to be something that not a lot of people are 
talking about offering. That sounds really, really cool. Um, yeah, I'm doing one uh, a week from tomorrow. I go to Vancouver, BC and work with, I, I'm how many are I think it's 10, maybe, an executive leadership team. They originally called me and said, we want you to come give a speech to a very small group. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't give a speech to any group anymore. What's the deal? And they said, what's the leadership team? And I said, no, no, we'll have a, we'll, we'll have a conversation. We'll have a two-hour conversation, which I will lead, and it will focus on the issues that you guys are, are facing. But it's going to be more of a sit-down coaching thing. I love uh, it. And then the CEO and I are going to be on a little stage. and fr- It's a small company. 120 employees, the CEO and I are going to have a conversation in front of all the employees. That's really cool. Oh, but so it's both for small leadership teams, but my biggest uh, client category is is entrepreneurs and solo practitioners. I work with some speakers. I work with uh, entrepreneurs who they've got a company, but I'm, it's, it's kind of personal coaching to them. Okay. So, you know, they say it's hard to see the label when you're inside the jar and that's what you're helping people just kind of lay it all out on the table and say, well, why are you doing that? Do you really need to keep doing that? Or what about this? Exactly. You know, you're giving them a fresh perspective. I love yeah, that. The, the, the biggest part of it is helping them think it through. Mm-hmm. And you know this, Jane, uh, when, they t- when they talk about it to a coach, it gives them a different way of processing right, right. the way they think about it. Sure. And they, they come up with sometimes just brilliant stuff, but it's because they've, they've looked at it with the help of an outside perspective. Right, right. Getting that clarity. I can't say enough about the coaches that I use. It's really tremendously helpful to bounce your ideas off somebody else. So this is, do you think you'll ever go back to speaking on the road? The same no, way. I mean, you're still on the road somewhat because you are bit. trying to do some of these things, right? Yeah. And I don't mind that. I just, Jane, in March, on a Monday afternoon, I got three full fee offers from three different bureaus on three dates that were open. And I said no to all of them wow. just because I didn't want to do it. And after the third one, I thought, dude, <laughs> Why do you even have it out there if you're going to say no when they call? So I sent that afternoon, I sent an email to Brian Palmer and every other bureau and said, take me off your website. I'm done. Wow. I'm, I'm not doing they must have been just been like, what? No. Yeah, it kind of was. Oh, but, well, you know what? You're still in their world and there's going to be an opportunity, I'm sure, for them to say, hey, this person has a very small group and you can sell it into oh, yeah. a, you can sell it into a round table discussion instead sure. of a speech. That sounds like so much fun. Congratulations Thank on you. your uh, evolution and clarity because it does sound like you are very, very clear in terms of, you know, you have been in restaurants. Are you still in the snow, uh, uh, part of the snowboard business? Yeah. The snowboard ski company, Gilson Snow. If you need a snowboard, just go to gilsonsnow.com. <laughs> yeah, I was an original investor, and now I'm chairman of the board of directors. And and pretty, I was I was in New York week before last, meeting with the top four people in that company. And they're all they're all to me they're kids. Yeah, the CEO's the oldest one. He's 29. Oh my gosh! It's it's, it's they think I'm Yoda. That's great. I love it. Well, you've done some really cool things. And so talk about that from a, like some people will build a team and their goal is to build a lot of diverse revenue streams. And your business model, your umbrella has always been very simple. It's been you, no team. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I, I, many, many, many years ago, I had a sky high, uh, number of two employees. Uh, (laughs) But then I I went back to zero. It's just been me forever. And people say, well, who does your travel? Who does your calendar? Well, I do. It's not that complicated. (laughs) I mean, come on. Your goal is not to do 80 engagements a year anyway, and it never was, even in the last few years, right? 
not in the last few years. My high was 158 in yeah. 1993, and that was awful. I, I just, that was stupid. Who wants to live that way? No, I mean, some people do, and that's fine yeah. if, if they love it. I didn't love it. No. So uh, that's different. But here was my theory. Rather than create a bunch of different revenue streams with, with the speaking or the message at the core, which, by the way, that's, a, that's perfectly wonderful to do that. Uh, that's a great way to make a living. What I did was I'm going to take the money I make from speaking and invest it in other things. Yeah. And those will be my revenue streams, real estate, a snowboard company, right. uh, the stock market, all, all sorts of stuff. And so retirement. I mean, you're not thinking about, oh, geez, I have no company to sell. You're just going to, sh- yeah. like you just sh- closed down the shingle for speaking, opened yeah. up the shingle for this brand of consulting that you're doing and voila, you're transitioned and uh, you don't, you'll have other things to help you through retirement. Exactly. Yeah, ex- yeah. exactly. That's nice. Uh, well, I always love talking to you and this is so timely, Joe. I'm just writing a, a blog post about, so you want to be a coach, you know, kind of things that people can think about if they're on their path to coaching. But also I've invited you to be a part of leading my master classes, brand new wealthy speaker school. And you were talking about having your kind of line right. Our school will be designed to help speakers create the businesses of their dreams and really the lifestyles of their dreams as well. So I am so excited that you're going to be a part of that. And this is just like a little teeny tiny teaser about that, that, um, it's something that people can keep their eyes open for. We're not going to tell them too much more at this point, but uh, details about the Wealthy Speakers School. We'll be getting the wait list out here shortly. I imagine it'll be up by the time this airs, and uh, I'm super excited about that, Joe. So both of us transitioning again, evolving again. I mean, picking a lane and changing a lane, as long as you're clear when you're in it, yeah. it doesn't really matter how often you reinvent, does it? No, I, I mean, I, I, I'll never forget one of the major speaker bureaus in the country. Oh, this was 25 years ago. Said, we're taking you out of our catalog. This was before <laughs> websites. Catalog. We're taking you out of our catalog. And I said, why? They said, because we can't keep up with what you're doing. Yeah. Now, well, it, because I was, uh, my lane was at that time, motivational business speaker. That was my lane. That's a pretty broad lane. Yeah. Yeah, and I was I was changing direction within that big fat lane a lot. Business. People like Brian Palmer loved it because he said you always keep it fresh. Yeah, but this other bureau said we don't know how to book you because we never know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, and I I do understand that. Um, I do too. Sure. I remember. I have to share something with you that's really funny. I remember seeing in speaking of catalogs, seeing the NSA directory. And yeah. you had a full page ad yep. of you standing in a suit with your hands in your pocket and your head thrown back and you were last thing. Yeah. And I remember flipping through this probably my first year in the business, 33 or 34 years ago and thinking, that guy is cool. I want to <laughs> be friends with that guy. And it was probably well, like another five years until we met. But like that had such an impact, Joe. I still remember it. That was maybe, that's probably the best ad I ever ran. And you know what? <laughs> bureaus would see that. And bureaus would say, the reason we're calling you to find out more about you is because we saw that ad and we thought, we might want to hang out with him. Yeah, yeah. It just made you look like this ultra cool hipster who had it all going on. And like, <laughs> funny how a photograph can just say everything you want to do. And now your photography, well, I'm actually going back a couple of years to when you did the coffee shop photography. Yeah. That was just like, this guy would be a nice guy to have a cup of coffee with. Like that was exactly what that said was he, you're just approachable and kind. Th- well, thank you. That, 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 and gee, I hope I am. Uh, and and <laughs> I did like those photos. Let me tell you a quick backstory about that stand in life and shot. Yeah. The photographer, a guy here in Nashville, Clark Thomas, yeah. great photographer. I went in to do that session 
and and we would talk and I'm standing in front of the camera and it feels awkward and I'm posing and smiling and this and that. And he's not taking any pictures. Yeah. And, and I said, well, Clark, you're not shooting anything. He said, it just doesn't feel real to me. It just, this just feels really contrived and fake. There's just nothing real going on. He said, let's just take a break. Let's just talk about what you're doing for a minute. So I was still standing in front of the camera and we were talking about something and he said something that made me roar laughing yeah. and he took it and he said, just got the shot. <laughs> Our work here is done. That was the money shot. That was the money shot. It was. You know, it's just food for thought. You know, this we'll put this in the show notes is what do you want your photography to say about you? Yeah. And you've always put a really big emphasis on photography to kind of take you where you want it to go next. And I think that that's really important. I, the last shoot that we did, and I love my latest website, I actually read, you had a red website uh, quite a while back and you've shifted your colors. And so it's interesting. I've stepped into red, yeah. uh, bold, red is bold, but we took a bunch of shot, uh, shots down by the beach and it was it really felt good to just be in my place. You know, yes. we have a, about an hour from here is a beach that I've spent a ton of time at yeah. and it just felt like, okay, I'm coming home and we're going to take a few shots. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's, you know, authentic and approachable. That's kind of what we're after. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that's what comes across. Well, Joe, I'm so excited to hang out with you in the Wealthy Speaker School coming up. And uh, let's let everybody know, because there might be some people who are like thinking about what is their next success. Yeah. Where do they go if they want to know more about you? The website's the same, which is just my name. It's just Joe Calloway, and that's C-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y, JoeCalloway.com. It's got everything they need to know. Beautiful. And Wealthy Speaker listeners, if you've enjoyed our podcast, please leave us a rating and a review. Make sure that you subscribe so that you will get all of the good juicy bits and details that we will be sending your way in the future. Uh, thank you, Joe, for being here. Most appreciated. Thank you, Jane, for having me. And with that, we will say see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now, everyone. Thanks for listening to The Wealthy Speaker Show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free wealthy speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, wealthy speakers.